Hi, are there any space fans among us? If there are, I recommend the Space Hub channel. The author explains mysteries of the cosmos, black holes, paradox of time travel and many other topics in a simple language. Also, find videos with reviews of all new photos taken by the James Webb Space Telescope and the latest news about space. The channel is hosted by an amateur astronomer, so you'll get the information firsthand. The link in the description. Yeah, London is a very beautiful city, but its main river Thames doesn't look right. It feels like, like some kind of sewage is constantly poured into it. But it is it. According to a recent study, every day a million liters of raw sewage is constantly poured into this river. I wonder how difficult it will be to purify this dirty water and turn it into a drinking water. And how, for example, we can recycle dirty water, being, for example, in a spaceship. So, let's find out. Strange as it sounds, nowadays in our modern and technologically advanced world, about 40% of Earth's entire population experience difficulties obtaining pure drinking water, which, by the way, is not that abundant in our planet. Only 3% of all the water reserves on the Earth can be called drinking water, which means that the amount of salt in it doesn't exceed 0.2% from its mass, and that it's fit for drinking. Besides, 90% of all drinking water reserves are in the form of ice in huge glaciers on the slopes of the mountains or in massive ice caps enveloping the poles of our blue planet. Only 10% of all drinking water on our planet is available to be used to quench our thirst. As a result, nowadays pure drinking water is becoming a resource which is of strategic value and millions of lives can depend on it, because people can live without food for almost a month, but we can only live several days without water. But unfortunately, nowadays many bodies of fresh water are on the brink of an ecological catastrophe because of unregulated dumping of chemical or human waste. Because of this, nowadays over a billion people in poor countries don't have access to pure drinking water, which causes more deaths than malaria, HIV, and AIDS combined. But still the progress is not standing still, and scientists from the PG company have invented a rather simple and cheap mixture, allowing to purify even most contaminated water. What matters the most is that it is fresh water, your purity. To demonstrate the properties of this powder, I have filled this bottle with water from the Thames in London, which looks more like murky slush than drinking water. To purify this liquid, I'm adding roughly half a gram of this powder into the half a liter bottle. After that I'm shaking it thoroughly and waiting for the results. Surprisingly, just 10 minutes later all the dirt from the water sank to the bottom and I was left with crystal clear water, although it was slightly yellowish. According to the manual, after treating water with this powder, it has to become fit for drinking. I decided to test it. The water has a rather strong chlorine of flavor, and I would only drink this water in some extreme conditions. The powder itself is mostly made of inorganic salts, namely iron sulfate and aluminum sulfate, which act as inorganic coagulators, that is, chemicals clamping most heavy metal salts and bacteria suspended in water. Besides, this powder also contains calcium hypochlorite, which acts as a chlorine donor, capable of killing 99.99% .99 of all bacteria and viruses in contaminated water. Also it contains some polymers, which improve clumping of all impurities, but I could not find their exact chemical composition. Turns out this small bag contains a very simple but very effective mixture. Powder from just one such a bag can turn 10 liters of contaminated water into drinking water. To repeat the experiment, I have filled my half a liter bottle with water from a local stream and have added a precise amount of the powder needed for this amount of water, which is 0.2 grams, and after that I shook it roughly. Strangely enough, two minutes after shaking, the sediment in the bottle just wouldn't sink to the bottom. That's why I decided to shake the liquid for about 10 minutes. Turns out it was a matter of time, because after 10 minutes of active shaking, the sediment particles in the bottle grew larger and sank well to the bottom right in front of my eyes, having grabbed along with them all the organic and inorganic compounds, leaving only pure drinking water.
By the way, modern water treatment plants use similar reagents for purifying drinking water. Iron and aluminum salts are added to water in order to clump the main contaminant, and water is disinfected either with chlorine or with our more modern ozonation technique. Perhaps such unusual powder could save our planet and solve the water crisis in many countries. However, for some reason, these days it's hard to find it on sale. I only managed to order 12 bags from the USA, and they were not that cheap. Of course, I don't want to create conspiracy theories, but for some reason, after these bags for purifying water went on sale, I haven't seen any news indicating that the problem with pure drinking water in some African countries and India has been solved. Nevertheless, besides the hard to get bags from the USA, which don't remove the unpleasant chlorine of flavor, there exist more effective time-tested ways of purifying water, which involve the use of filters. Nowadays, many companies all over the world have developed many types of water filters, but their operating principle is more or less the same, which is to trap as many impurities from the water as possible. I also had a small camping water filter with me on the bank of the Thames, which according to the manufacturer can purify up to 100 liters of most contaminated water. I decided to test if it can purify at least half a liter of water from the Thames to a more or less drinkable state. Indeed, after purifying with this filter, the water became clear and more or less pleasant to taste in comparison to the previous slush from the London River. I decided to also taste this water. This water is definitely much more pleasant to taste than the previous water purified with the help of bag powder. You can remove almost all bacteria and viruses from regular water with the help of this filter, because it's equipped with special membranes, which only allow water molecules to pass through and trap all the bacteria and viruses inside the filter. Unfortunately, such camping filters don't remove ions and molecules from water, which means that water contaminated with lead or that is hot almost won't get purified after passing through such a filter. If you didn't know, water has so-called hardness, which from a chemical point of view is the amount of calcium salts dissolved in a certain volume of water. There is a permanent hardness and a temporary one. For instance, water is permanently hard if it contains calcium salt in it, which dissolves well, for instance such as calcium chloride. It gives water a slightly bitter taste. There is also a temporary hardness of water. Such water contains calcium hydrocarbonate, which easily breaks down when water is boiled. That's why there builds up such an attractive and always bothersome lime scale inside our kettles, which is just calcium carbonate. You can measure the hardness of water using such special test strips, which indicate not only whether or not the water contains calcium ions, but also iron, lead and other inorganic compounds. It's noteworthy that the water from the Thames contains a rather large amount of nitrites, and it's got an average hardness because of the calcium hydrocarbonate from the local rocks dissolving it. By the way, calcium hydrocarbonate's property to dissolve well in water can create real natural wonders in many places on our planet. This cave in Slovenia, which was forming for millions of years in limestone rocks as a result of rainwater permeating through the rocks and dissolving calcium carbonate, turning it into soluble bicarbonate, making the water hard, is one example of that. Because of that, a simple filter won't be able to remove calcium salts from such water. That's why to purify water further, simple distillation can be used, which will remove most impurities from the water, leaving only water vapor, which condenses on the refrigerator and creates a distillate, which is almost pure water. Why almost pure? Because such water can still obtain smallest vestiges of some volatile chemicals, which can dissolve in water and form ions. That's why, usually to make water ultra-pure, it needs to be purified two or three times in order to completely remove all impurities from it. As if that was not enough, ultra-pure water can still be purified by a special dionizer, which removes all the possible leftover chemicals. Most of those chemicals are different inorganic salts, which could end up in the water somehow. Inside the deionizer, there is a special ion exchange resin, which consists of unorganic polymers, for instance such as polystyrene sulfonate. 
When water passes through such resin, it attracts either positive or negative ions from the solution, substituting them with regular water. Thus, you can obtain almost the purest water on the Earth, which is 99.999% dihydrogen monoxide. By the way, I decided to taste such water. It is not worthy, it tastes like water. And also it not worthy that my mouth went very dry after drinking such water. Evidently water that is this pure washes away all minerals from the mouth, which is why salivary secretion reduces. But in reality, such pure water is obtained in laboratories, not for drinking, but rather for various analytical samples, in which water is used as a universal solvent. So. Now we have obtained the most pure water from the contaminated Thames in London. But what about purifying other liquids, which are not so pleasant and can accumulate, for example, on a spacecraft? I'm talking about a yellow liquid every one of us produces in his organism every day, which is urine. There are several ways to turn it into drinking water, for instance with the help of distillation. This method has been used as the International Space Station since 2009, but still this method is quite energy consuming and requires complex equipment in zero gravity conditions, because it's not that easy to distill water in zero gravity. That's why recently scientists have invented a new and quite simple method of recycling human waste and turning it into drinking water, which is forward osmosis. This purification process is fairly simple, and to illustrate it, I put several hydrogel balls soaked in water into the container with concentrated salt solution. Because the water inside the balls is fresh, it tries to stream into a salter environment in order to balance the system and to make the salt concentration in the balls the same as in the solution. Because of that the balls shrink, because of that is known as osmotic pressure, which forms when water streams away from the, the most concentrated solution to the least concentrated solution. This is precisely how this unusual filter with a forward osmosis membrane works. With the help of this filter, you can turn regular urine into drinking water. To do this, first I prepared a sugar solution, dissolving 250 grams of sugar in 1 liter of water to create a molecular diffusion of the solutions. After that, I assembled such a special setup, which first pumps urine through this cartridge with a membrane. To create osmotic pressure, sugar solution will be pumped on the other end of the membrane. Now I can test out this setup. After turning on the device, the liquid from my body streamed in pipes for the special semi-permeable membrane, and I started pumping the sugar solution from the other end of it. Since there is almost no sugar in my urine, the molecules of the more dilute yellow solution started moving towards the more concentrated sugar solution in order to try to balance out the sugar concentration in the system. Because of the special production technology of the membrane, only water molecules can permeate through it, at the same time leaving all the unnecessary chemicals from urine in the same container with the yellow solution. That's why after passing two solutions through such a membrane, urine becomes more concentrated, but the sugar solution becomes more diluted because of the water molecules streaming in. Basically, besides sugar solution, you can also use other solutions, for instance solution of salt or glycerin, but it's easier to dissolve sugar and make a concentrated sugar solution. It worth of note that this water purification technique was invented by a Danish company called Aquaparin. The the company is named this way after special protein molecules, which are present in any living cells and which can be quickly permeated by water molecules and thus be saturated with water. But at the same time, such cells prevent other molecules from entering them. The structure of my filter membrane resembles those very proteins called aquaparins, thus in a sense it mimics natural processes which happen in the cells of all living organisms on our planet. In humans and other animals aquaparins are usually centered in kidney cells, that's why it can be said that this membrane is analogous to an artificial kidney. The process is running quite smoothly at the beginning stage of the work of my setup, but water from the yellow liquid is getting extracted in smaller quantities after the concentration of sugar in the left jar dropped. 
in contrast to energy consignment and bulky reverse osmosis setup, which for instance are used for turning seawater into fresh water and for additional purification of pure tap water. The energy consumption of the forward osmosis membrane is minimal. For instance, my setup consumes only 8 watts. To run a reverse osmosis membrane, high pressure needs to be created and its pump will certainly consume more than 8 watts. That's why, in my opinion, such forward osmosis membrane setups are the future of water purification, especially in closed loops, for instance at the interplanetary stations and spacecraft in space exploration. As a result, after two hours of purification, the volume of urine in the left jar decreased by three times, and the solution itself grew a bit murky, because of the increased concentration of urea and other waste material in it. The left sweet solution remained as transparent and only the amount of water molecules increased. After purifying this yellow liquid with a not so nice a smell, I disassembled the setup and got roughly 2 liters of sweet water. What shall I do with it? I toed for a while and decided that it would make a great lemonade, which could be made in the conditions more colonies would find themselves in. To do that, first of all I decided to carbonate my sweet water, which I extracted from urine, and used a regular soda siphon for that. <laughs> I also decided to make a flavor solution for making a real orange lemonade. I dissolved about 3 grams of citric acid in water, added one drop of orange extract to give it an aroma, and also a little bit of food coloring. I have also added a little bit of vitamin B2 to the solution, which dyes the solution a nice orange color. After all preparations, we can mix the flavor solution with the sweet sparkling water, and after that, I'll get a real Fanta extracted from urine. Well, I think I can try it. So, let's try this drink from my own pee. <laughs> Sounds interesting. Smells like something like seawater. Hmm, but it tastes good. Not really like Fanta from grocery store, but it's very, very drinkable. Maybe it has a little off smell, something special, <laughs> but uh, in general, acidity and sugar content is very, very good. Maybe in the future, some space astronauts or Martian colonists will use this technology to make such drinks from their own waste products, <laughs> for example, pee. Yeah, it will be interesting. In general, I like this technology, yeah. By the way, it is worth to note that you can not only extract pure water from urine, but also concentrate other liquids, for instance coffee or beer, to make transportation cheaper or to make production of dry instant coffee easier with the help of a forward osmosis setup. I tried to concentrate a can of beer, having extracted excess water from it. To my purpose, this process went really fast and took about 10 minutes. I think I can try this concentrated beer. Hmm. This beer tastes like some unalcoholic beer, but after passing through the membrane, it became maybe more concentrated. But I don't feel any alcohol in it. For me, it's weird. Where's my beer? Well, I think after watching this video, now you know how to purify water from excess impurities and turn it into drinking water, and also how to turn human waste products into delicious lemonade. So, if you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see many more new and interesting.